Hi everyone. Okay, in this video I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to talk actually about the layers. And this is going to be a little bit different because I'm not actually going to be talking too much about Lazy or Lazy itself. I'm going to be talking, uh, this is more just an introduction to the layer types that it uses, which are pretty standard. They are fairly, um, I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not terribly inventive in what layers it uses. It uses a pretty standard layer of layout, but just in case you're not familiar with them or you're kind of new to it or you just want a refresher or whatever, you just want to know exactly what Lassie uses, I'll go ahead and uh, highlight them. There are eight primary layers, and these are listed uh, a little bit opposite from how they would usually be listed. Um, if you were actually looking at a diagram of the chip, uh, this layer would usually be on top and this would be on the bottom, so it kind of goes bottom up, but oh well. Uh, so yeah, eight primary layers, uh, and I'll just, uh, I'll basically explain what each one is and what it's for, and I, I may get some of it wrong, I apologize if I do, I understand that uh, you know, I'm not really uh, that brilliant when it comes to this kind of chip silicon work, it's not necessarily my background. So uh, if, if I make any mistakes, please somebody feel free to correct me in the in the comments to the video. I, I don't want to get anything wrong, but I, I'll try to keep it pretty simple and straightforward and just uh, kind of uh, you know be really easy about it. So I'll go ahead and start with layer eight because this would be on top again if you were looking at a traditional kind of diagram of the chip. And layer eight is called met, which is the the metal layer. These uh, the things in this layer form the actual metal. You know how chips are, you've heard of metal oxide semiconductor, this is the M part of the MOS. The, these are the actual, uh, it's usually aluminum in most chips, uh, and th this is what the bond wires actually collect to. There, there's actually a tiny bond wire that gets soldered or attached to this metal piece, and that in turn leads to um, uh, well, I guess it doesn't have to be. Actually, I shouldn't say that because these aren't only the parts that connect to the actual pins of the chip. If you look at the, uh, hold on. If you look at the actual uh, op amps, no, don't save changes. If you look at the actual op amp schematic here, these six huge squares here are attached to the actual pins of the op amp. But it doesn't have to be the case. If you look at just the uh, NPN schematic, these. Um, these three metal pads don't actually connect to external pins, they're just metal that form interconnects to other parts of the chip. So I guess just to keep it simple, yeah, just call it metal, which is exactly what it is. It's just, it's conductive metal, it's not silicon, it's nothing fancy, it's just bits of aluminum that are embedded in the chip. So nothing to it, right? Uh, the contact layer is basically just a layer that stands between the metallization layer and the silicon underneath. It basically is just a gateway that um, that, yeah, that connects the metal to the silicon. Again, if you look at the op-amp schematic um, and look at the metal layer and see the metal layout and then take a look at the contact layer, all this is basically the parts where the metal contacts the silicon underneath. I should actually, well, let me, let me clear all the layers and just turn on these two layers so you can kind of see. So yeah, see all these parts where the blue overlaps with the with the gray, that's where the metal touches down and touches the silicon. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, uh, and then below that, if I go back to the transistor, look at our layers again. Uh, so the next layer is uh, quite simply the emitter layer, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's what's used for, um, in this case, for the emitter of the uh, transistor. And if you look at just the emitter layer, there it is. Confusingly enough, it's it's also used on the collector. I, I'm not sure exactly why that is. I believe it's just because it um, it connects with the uh, the contact layer above it, and so it's 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 obviously not just used for emitters on transistors. It's basically just the layer between. Well, simply put, it's the layer between the layer above it and the layer below it. Duh. I, I know that's probably not very well expressed, but. All right, uh, the next layer is the resistive layer. It's not used at all in this transistor. In fact, again, if we go back to the op amp and look at just the uh, resistive layer, it's only used in these 
few resistive structures. These are in fact silicon resistors. And that's it. So it is literally used as resistors, pretty sparsely used as you can tell. Moving on, next layer is the base layer. And as you can see, it is in fact used for the core. The um, This is like the, as the name suggests, it is the base or the, the heart of the, the body of the, the uh, silicon. Uh, I should probably stipulate, by the way, uh, you know what, I, I didn't mention the type, so I probably should. Uh, so, okay, let me go back. The emitter layer, this is n-type silicon. Uh, so yeah, you have an n-type emitter layer, and below that you have a, oh, you don't see the resistive layer on this, but, but this, the resistive layer is p-type silicon, and so is the base. The base here is also p-type silicon, which makes sense because this is an NPN transistor, right? So course the base in the middle is P and then the collector and the emitter are N type silicon so that makes sense so you have a, a P type base next layer after that layer 3 is confusingly enough it's called the sinker layer which is a little a little weird I mean it's called that because the electrons go into it it's used in this in the transistor it's used for the uh, for the collector as you can see and if you look at the op amp uh, just draw the sinker layer. Yeah, actually, it's hard. It's kind of hard to see it in context because you don't see what's around it. But yeah, these are basic. This is basically what's used for the collectors on transistors, the parts that you sink electrons into. And it is basically the uh, the lowest part. The, the sink layer at the very bottom is basically the lowest layer of the chip that's really used for actual functionality. The layers below that are just isolation layers. Layer two is, uh, it is indeed called the isolation layer, and it's used to just separate out the different parts of the chip so that they don't, uh, you know, so that they're separate from each other. It kind of gives a level of uh, separation or isolation. And then uh, that's also p-type, by the way. The isolation layer is p-type silicon. And then at the very bottom, the last layer that we have is what's called the buried island layer. Um, which is n-type silicon and it basically I believe again correct me if I'm wrong my understanding is that this has no electrical functionality it just serves to uh, I guess it creates desirable mechanical or capacitive properties for the for the circuit that's that's the best I can say because if you look at the uh, if you look at the actual NPN transistor again this outer brown rectangle is the isolation layer, which obviously doesn't connect with the transistor itself. And the red thing also, the, the buried island layer, doesn't actually connect. It's at the very bottom of the chip. It doesn't connect to the workings of the transistor. It's just there to uh, be a buried island, as I, uh, as I say. So there you go. So you can probably ignore, like I said, you can probably pretty much ignore layers one and two when you're starting off because they're not really electrically functional or live. Most important layers of the chip, the actual core layers, are uh, the sinker layer used for you know collectors. That's at the very bottom, and the base layer, resistive layer, if you use it very much, and then the uh, emitter layer, the n-type emitter layer at the top. And then if you're using metal, then you, you know, overlay the chip with metal and use a connective layer to, uh, or the contact layer to join the metal to the silicon. All right, there we go. That's it. There you have the eight fundamental layers used by Lassie. And again, if I've made any mistakes, please feel free to correct me. I am not a silicon designer by background. I'm actually more of a computer guy. Uh, electronics is a little bit of something I do. I'm more of a computer engineer than an electrical engineer, so forgive me if I've made any mistakes, and feel free to set me straight. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I will see you later. Bye-bye for now.